Hello and welcome back to Parisia's 33 day preparation for consecration to Jesus through Joseph. Today is day 23 and uh, our very special guest, uh, a man who is returning to tell us more about St. Joseph, a Perusia world favorite is Mr. Alan Smith. Alan, welcome back to Perusia world. How are you today? I'm doing well, Matthew. Thanks for having me. It's uh, a very special day today. I know many of us are celebrating Remembrance Day. And so uh, again, we all have uh, fond memories of, uh, I'd like to say childhood memories of going to the local Cenotap and uh, remembering our dead. And so I know that we'll take an opportunity today to uh, do that also. And uh, again, it speaks close to home because my father is a vet and uh, of course served in the Navy for many years during the war. And so um, mm. he shared with me uh, many of those stories. So uh, again, we'll take a little break uh, later on through the program to do that, but it's always great to be back to talk about uh, good St. Joseph, who truly is a great warrior. Um, and again, we call him terror of demons. So uh, it's gonna be a great opportunity for me to share a little bit about uh, what I kind of my lived experience with St. Joseph. Uh, because I think many of our viewers are looking for some tips. They're looking for some practical guides. You know, uh, they're enjoying the meditation books. They're beautiful, you know. Uh, but I think what people want is, you know, what can I do when this uh, consecration is over? Can you give me four or five ideas of things I can kind of incorporate into my life? And so we'll do that today. Absolutely. Because, uh, of course, when uh, we spoke to you last time, uh, you, you said to me, wow, I barely scratched the surface. And I said, hey, if you've got more to say, then we'd love to have you back. And so here we are today. So it's uh, practical tips. And, and these are things that you use in your own spiritual life. Is that correct, Alan? That's correct. That's correct. Um, I think people ask me a lot about my uh, clothing and the slogan that's on the back of my uh, work clothes. It's the words, pray, trust, don't worry. And I am a gas man. Now, when they, people say, do you work at the gas station? I say, no, 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 I'm a pipe fitter plumber. I, I work on a lot of gas lines. And so if it, uh, if it burns gas, I probably fix it or install it. But so uh, when I named my company many years ago, I called it Al the gas man. And so uh, naturally the clothing says gas man on it. Um, it's a bit of an acronym for God and saints man. <laughs> like, so when people say, what is gas man? I say, God and saints man. Okay. So uh, nice. just to get them thinking <laughs> about it, right? Because they don't always clue in, but still uh, it is a conversation starter. And I realized many years ago, I thought, I want to share my faith. Um, you know, I want to go into the marketplace and be able to evangelize, um, not so much in a secret way, but in what I call a soft sell. And so uh, having these words, pray, trust, don't worry, on the back of my clothing is that soft sell. It's that gentle reminder to people to say, um, pray, trust, don't worry. Uh, it's not as bold as John 3.16 or you know some other scripture verse that uh, is like putting someone uh, want to say a Bible thumper. Uh, it's more of a, a generic uh, spirituality, and again, it starts a conversation. But um, you know, I want to go back before I even put the slogan on the back of my jerseys. I think I had to come to a spot in my life, almost like a, a natural progression, uh, part of my faith journey. And so um, when I was sharing about St. Joseph last time, I, I, as I said, I just scratched the surface. But, um, you know, there's other things that I forgot to say in that presentation, and I thought it would be important to reveal that today. And, um, you know, I think all of us are introduced to St. Joseph um, more through the Christmas crash. We always uh, kind of find out about him at Christmas time. We see uh, little figurines of, of course, the baby Jesus, Mary, the shepherds, and good St. Joseph. Uh, but, you know, for me, I think it was something that I found him, I think, when I was uh, engaged. And, um, you know, there was something that um, as I uh, was dating through high school and college, and then finally found the woman of my dreams, I thought, Lord, I need some divine help here. And uh, so at that point, I uh, really went to St. Joseph and I said, 
you got to help me here. You got to really help me. I think I've got the right one here. <laughs> and, um, and so he goes, well, you know, if you want to, me to be your, you know, your mentor, um, you know, you got to kind of imitate me and, and trust in me. And so uh, the first thing I, I did was I said, you know, I really feel that uh, this young lady at the time, uh, who is now my wife of 37 years, um, you know, I just thought I need, I need some um, extra help. And so I started off by saying, if I was going to propose to my wife, what day to propose to her? And of course, March the 19th was the day I proposed to my wife, which was the Feast of St. Joseph. And so I thought, you know, let's start with that. And so I always say to young men who are uh, pursuing the woman of their dreams, look at March 19th on your calendar. It's, it's going to help you um, a great deal. And I, that would apply to the ladies too, I'm sure. You know, But uh, again, the, the patronage of St. Joseph is so important. So I incorporated him even in my, the engagement of my wife uh, to ask my wife to marry me on March the 19th. So I think uh, from that moment on, St. Joseph said, almost said, well done, you're starting off well. Let's continue this, right? And so uh, for myself, it was more of, a, you know, just getting married. And then I think I was sharing last time that uh, during the pre-marriage course that uh, most young couples have to, uh, um, you know, go through uh, to be married in the Catholic Church, uh, the formators, of course, gave a presentation to the men and to the ladies. They, um, you know, wanted to set us aside. And so the presenter at the time uh, gave a good reflection on good St. Joseph and how he was the model husband and how, uh, you know, we could learn from him. And, you know, after that weekend, I took away, uh, you know, a few good pointers from the talk, but I kind of realized that St. Joseph was inviting me to uh, go and actually live with him um, in the sense that St. Joseph has this holy house and it's the holy house of Nazareth. And of course, in that house is the Blessed Virgin Mary and uh, the child Jesus, but it was this invitation to say, I want you to come and move in with me. I'm going to build an addition to my house and have you bring your family to live under my roof. Uh, but the only thing is, is you have to live, live under my rules, okay, and my guidance, okay, and so, um, and I, again, being an apprentice in my um, early years, I had to, of course, apprentice to become a plumber, pipe fitter, and apprentices usually take four or five years. And, uh, you know, we do lots of menial tasks, but uh, again, you learn the trade. And so I really kind of bought into this, uh, let St. Joseph be your mentor, It'll become an apprentice of St. Joseph. And uh, when I give talks at men's conferences, this is kind of what I expand on. I say, you know, pretend you are in the trades, but you're learning from good St. Joseph. Now, St. Joseph taught Jesus how to be a carpenter, you know, we might say a tecton. But uh, again, in those uh, days with good St. Joseph, you learned the life lessons, how to extend courtesies to, um, you know, the customers, how to, of course, uh, have a day of prayer and meditation and bring God into the conversations. And so um, every day when I went out in my work truck, of course, I would pray uh, the litany of St. Joseph. Uh, I would try to get to Holy Mass every day uh, as part of my daily regime. Uh, but still, there was this sense that I really felt that I was apprentice. I was apprenticing under St. Joseph uh, because I really started to desire to become a Joseph. And I say, this is what, um, you know, the advice I give to a lot of men is that, you know, you have to desire this. If you want to be uh, you know, a world-class athlete, you're going to have to train and have this discipline. And if you want to become a saint like St. Joseph, you're going to have to, uh, you know, walk the walk. Uh, good St. Joseph, of course, is going to talk the talk, but you have to imitate him. And so uh, this desire came into my heart to uh, want to be a Joseph. Um, I wanted to hear these words that Al Smith, the gas man, is a just man. Um, you know, because we always hear, even in the scriptures, as we read them, um, you know, they would say two things about Jesus. You know, is he not the carpenter's son? And we also know that Joseph was a just man. And uh, what a great tribute to be called a just man. And so I started to desire to be known as a just one. And so how do you get that reputation? 
you have to charge a fair price. You have to uh, be good with your people, be good with your customers, be community minded as St. Joseph was. And so all of these things, um, you know, work towards a good end. And, uh, you know, I'm a blessed man in that I uh, have a son who uh, followed in my footsteps and, uh, you know, learned from me at a very young age, the, um, the art of uh, putting together pipes and uh, he too became a licensed fitter. And uh, he actually was the youngest um, person ever to challenge the provincial exams. And at the age of 15, he was a fully licensed plumber. Um, and so again, it was unheard of, but because my son had started working since he was five, um, by the time he was 15, he kind of knew um, all the, uh, you know, the scientific side, of course, the hands-on side, and he was able to challenge the provincial exam. So uh, I was very proud, a very proud moment for me as a father, but it was again, a St. Joseph moment in that, you know, all the pouring your energies into your child uh, in the trades, we saw that results. And of course, um, our blessed Lord made St. Joseph very proud many times. And um, so always these things. So I, I think it's this idea of, you know, you want to desire to become like St. Joseph. Um, you know, some people say, oh, I love St. Therese. Well, how about become like St. Therese? Why don't you try to imitate St. Therese? Um, because that's what happens. A lot of times we get, oh, I want to be like that saint, or I want to, <laughs> well, you got to put some work in to become like that holy person. And so, um, so what I wanted to give is what I like to call some tips um, of what I've learned over the years. And these have worked for me. They're not for everyone and um, because some of them are too hard maybe or something like that. But, um, you know, and I, I just, I wrote them down here. I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, forget them, but um, I, I'll just mention them. And then I think it just, again, I think a lot of people, it will, you know, um, speak to your heart. So uh, the one thing I learned from St. Joseph was he embraced silence. And I think I've heard some of the speakers during this um, conference talk about uh, St. Joseph has taught them the value of science. Uh, I'm not science. I think of Father Spitzer there, sorry. Um, the value of, of silence. And I found that at a very young age, that paid major dividends in my life. Uh, you know, I am a devotee to a daily holy hour. And uh, usually I do my holy hour at seven in the morning. Um, I'll raise, I, I'll get up early, have breakfast, and then head out to the church and uh, do my holy hour, and then go to mass at eight in the morning. And so uh, that time of silence has always paid big dividends in my life. And I have to say that uh, it is one thing I strongly recommend to everyone is that art of practicing silence. Uh, very difficult in this crazy busy world. But if you had to make any New Year's resolution coming up in 2022, or after the year of St. Joseph is over, uh, take up that resolution of embracing silence. And, uh, you know, you will truly be blessed on that. Um, the second thing I've learned over the years is what I'd like to call, you know, embracing um, secret sacrifices. Um, now, I don't, don't get me wrong, I love applause, okay? I love, um, you know, I love the awards. I love this, I love that. Like, don't get me wrong. Uh, I love being a decorated um, writer and stuff and I'll never shun the award ceremonies, but um, I've learned that the real gift is to do things secretly, to do those kind acts in secret. And I'm sure that good St. Joseph did so many things in secret because the whole key to the mystery of, of Nazareth was it was hidden. They lived a hidden life. And so uh, lots of the good works they did, uh, it was done in secret. And uh, when you read many of the mystics, the mystics talk about stories of where uh, good St. Joseph would bring home, um, you know, his, um, his, his money from the day. And of course, he would take enough to feed the Holy Family. But then, of course, he would take some extra and feed uh, those in need in the community. So uh, they took their daily bread and then, of course, fed others, always in secret. But um, I think it's that whole idea of learning how to make secret sacrifices. And uh, St. Joseph is a great inspiration on that. So um, what did the Lord say in Scripture? You know, um, you know, if you go and pray, 
close the door, do it in secret. If you're going to give, don't know what your, what your right hand or your left hand is doing. I better study my scripture. I better take a Perusia Bible study or something like that uh, to get better at that. But still, you know what I'm saying. So again, the, the whole idea of secret sacrifice, that's one thing I've learned about St. Joseph. Um, you know, naturally, um, this third one I always say is difficult for some. It's to embrace your wife. I know that uh, for the men, a lot of times, I think a lot of times we take our wives for granted. And um, it just happens that way. And yet St. Joseph had the most beautiful, the most, um, you know, holy wife. And of course, he took advantage of that to continue to go to her, uh, to be strengthened by her. And uh, again, I think a lot of times we don't do that. And so uh, I think I had to go to St. Joseph as my mentor, because again, I'm not always um, as huggy kissy as I should be. Um, and uh, again, it was St. Joseph that helped me turn the, the corner on that, because again, he led by example and say, embrace your wife. Uh, it's a gift that God has given you, and you also have a sacramental marriage. And so it's the grace of your sacrament. And so, um, again, I think, I thought, what do they say? If you don't use it, you lose it. I mean, that's more of an athletic thing. But still, I think you have to take the time to embrace your wife. And, you know, the, the fourth thing I'd like to share is the same thing about embracing your children. Um, sometimes children can sometimes just be part of the scenery. But, you know, are they special? Are they, um, you know, do they feel that, you know, they're loved. And uh, a lot of times, again, you have to just do that daily reminder. And St. Joseph led the way for me, because again, you know, I would go to him and say, are there ways of improving? And I, I would have these little conversations uh, with St. Joseph, and it's more of the interior um, prayers that a lot of us have. And, um, you know, he would just remind me in a nice way to say, I love the child Jesus. I never wanted to be separated from that child. And uh, I just poured my life into that child. And uh, what are you doing with your son, your two daughters? You know, and, you know, what are you doing with some of your godchildren? And I, I think sometimes, you know, godchildren are um, something that St. Joseph has really helped me with because um, it's that whole idea of paternity. Um, you know, you're a spiritual father to so many of these children that you were the confirmation sponsor, the baptismal sponsor. And sometimes we take those assignments as, um, you know, they're just, they're a nice token, but do we take them seriously? And are we uh, being, um, you know, giving justice to um, that role of being a godfather or a godmother? And so, uh, you know, when we talk about embracing the child and that being one of these things I like to challenge people on, it's this idea of, yeah, embracing our godchildren too. Um, and again, it's the St. Joseph is, who it was that gave me that gentle reminder because you would see him, especially at Christmas time, holding the Christ child, you know, embracing the child. And um, of course, his heart was torn when he lost the child for three days. And so, um, again, uh, embrace the child. This is uh, so important, I find, and, um, you know, my, my advice to men, especially. And, you know, to the ladies that are watching, again, you can do the same thing. But again, St. Joseph is the guide, is the guide. Um, I think one thing that inspires, um, you know, many of us is we, we want to live what I call a domestic church. Um, you know, yes, we are Catholic and we belong and attend, you know, the Catholic church, but, you know, that idea of a domestic church is so important. Um, and I think this was that whole lesson of Nazareth that St. Joseph, I just envision him leading his family in the scriptures, um, leading in prayer. Like I, you know, that one, my, my, my favorite scripture passage is from the book of Numbers, that, that the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you kindly and bring you peace. It's my absolute favorite, favorite scripture because it is the blessing that St. Joseph prayed over Jesus every night. Um, it's the blessing that he prayed over the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so uh, for me as a father, and the Lord has given me these, um, these powers to bless my children, to bless my good wife, um, what better way to bless them than the blessing that St. Joseph used um, on his 
his child, and of course, his wife. And so um, this is the idea of the domestic church, praying together, praying the family rosary, uh, the importance that, uh, you know, um, my mom would always say to me, um, you know, I'm one of 12 children. And so we would go out into the world and, of course, go to school. Uh, and she would say, you know, you may learn things at school, but you're going to learn your faith here at home. This is where you're going to learn your faith in this house. And uh, yes, you have some catechist and you have some teachers that are well-meaning, but you're going to learn your faith in the domestic church here at home. And I think I want to say to people, don't forget the domestic church. Uh, we sometimes rely on the institutional church to take care of our children, uh, their catechesis, uh, and even sometimes our own catechesis. But a lot of times it has to be done at home. And I remember one time going to a men's conference and, uh, you know, the speaker really, um, I think he just challenged us and he said, you know, men, you are the priest, prophet, and king of your home. And, you know, I've heard that many times, you're priest, prophet, and king. And actually, we all uh, have that element to us when we were baptized, we received, it could be, we all became priest, prophet, and king through our baptism. And, uh, but yet my good wife reminds me all the time, remember your priest, prophet, and king. And, uh, you know, that, that whole idea of uh, being priest of the home, uh, this um, formator or this uh, presenter at the men's conference said, um, you know, that uh, he said, he challenged us. He says, I want you to have to put on a retreat for your family because you're the spiritual guide, the priest, prophet, and king. So your homework, he sent us homework and said, I want you to make up, write, print, do a retreat for your wife and children. Okay, there you go. And I think we all went home angry, you know, saying, I'm never coming back to this conference again, right? But again, I took it to heart and I remember developing uh, a little retreat to uh, take my children on and my wife, uh, because again, of this um, example that St. Joseph uh, gave me in the sense that he led his family in prayer. He did all of that stuff. And so, uh, you know, it's so important that uh, they do that. So, um, you know, it's always these things. Uh, but, you know, one thing that St. Joseph did is he lived the liturgical life. And uh, this is the sixth point I'd like to make, is that, um, you know, he always went to Jerusalem. I mean, they always made the trek, you know, to do what Jewish law required. And, you know, do we live the liturgical life? So St. Joseph gives that holy example. But what are we doing? And um, I know that, uh, again, if you come to my house, you're going to have a lot of fun. Because um, we eat a lot of cake, and we celebrate as many saints as we can, you know, um, we get the Catholic calendar out, and we celebrate all the ones uh, that are our namesake, uh, that, of course, we have a fond devotion to. And I encourage everyone to do the same thing, to live the liturgical life, to have some celebrations. I mean, we just celebrated the Feast of All Saints and All Souls. And so, you know, those beautiful All Saints parties, a great opportunity. And we, we kind of string them out for three days, you know, make them last, you know, and uh, share them around. So uh, the kids don't complain about going to three All Saints parties. They're okay with that, right? But still, it's this idea that it's so important to, um, to celebrate liturgical life because St. Joseph did. Um, and of course, I think that's important. And, you know, the last um, uh, thing that I would say is that um, St. Joseph taught me how to work for God, that your work, you know, can become holy if you apply it and work for God. And so, um, you know, that's the whole idea. Why do you wake up to go to work? Is it for... Um, you know, fame and fortune, or is it to uh, be used for God in his kingdom? And so, um, you know, these are all things. And so, uh, again, these seven um, things I like to remind people is to, again, embrace silence, embrace, you know, secret sacrifice, um, embrace your wife, embrace your children, if you have them, uh, build your own domestic church, uh, live the liturgical life, and work for God. And so um, these are like seven little tips that I give, and I'm trying just to consolidate them because again, I know we don't have as much time as we'd like to uh, during these sessions because we're still gonna pray the rosary today. But, you know, I was touched by Dr. Scott Hahn. And, um, you know, when the first day of this, um, this conference, 
he came and he said, um, and I just gonna adjust my, got the, my so, somehow, you know, you get your earplugs that year or earbuds that just tug on you there, but I, I'm good now. But, but Dr. Scott Hahn on day one, I remember he introduced what he called the Josery. And uh, he challenged us to, um, you know, look at the joyful mysteries of the Holy Rosary, uh, but through the eyes of St. Joseph. And I thought, you know, I, I went home and I thought, you know, that, that sounds like a beautiful devotion. I'm going to see what that does. But, you know, I kind of looked at my, uh, you know, my slogan of pray, trust, don't worry. And I thought, you know, that really is St. Joseph's slogan. I thought if there's anybody that uh, aspires to praying, trusting in God, and not worrying, it's good St. Joseph. And so I like to say that even though Padre Pio is kind of what people think of when they think of pray, hope, don't worry, or pray, trust, don't worry, it's actually, I like to believe, St. Joseph's motto, that he had to pray, he had to trust in God, and not worry. And when I look at those five joyful mysteries, and I'll just kind of just spend a little bit of time just thinking of that and, and just asking you at home to also ponder this, that, you know, you think of the Annunciation, which is the first joyful mystery. And so we envision, of course, Our Lady and the angel, and of course, um, you know, what happened there. But we think of St. Joseph's Annunciation and how the angel appeared to St. Joseph in his dream and that he had to then respond to the angel's uh, request to uh, take Mary as his wife. And yet, do we have our own enunciations where, you know, we have our own little holy um, inspirations? Uh, not saying that angels appear to us, but many of us sometimes, sometimes wake up and say, wow, I kind of feel like I have to do this now, or I should do that. But uh, again, we all have our own little enunciations um, from time to time, and we need to respond uh, in, in, in kind. Again, uh, in most cases, it's to do something, a good work. And so, uh, again, that whole idea that St. Joseph had to pray, had to trust, and not to worry when he had his annunciation. You know, I think of the, the second mystery of the visitation and how, um, you know, St. Joseph was involved in the visitation. Yes, we hear, you know, we think of Mary entering the room, the home of St. Elizabeth and the greetings, and of course, um, St. John the Baptist leaping in her womb. But we always think, of course, Our Lady had to get, you know, to there <laughs> through St. Joseph, and St. Joseph would have accompanied her. And uh, I was reading a tradition uh, says that even St. Joseph took work in the area so that he could be with his wife. He didn't want to leave her. I, you know, as I started to think about how much St. Joseph loved the Blessed Virgin Mary and how much he loved the child Jesus, he wouldn't want to be separated from her. And so it makes sense that he would take work in the area so that he could be with her. And so um, when I heard that or read that, I thought maybe that's, you know, believable. You know, did he, because some people say, oh yeah, he, you know, he took the donkey, they went for five days. And then he left went back home and he says, I'll see you in three months or six months. I, I, I'd like to think that he stayed around, that he, um, of course, delivered, um, not delivered, but, you know, got the Blessed Virgin Mary to her cousin's house. And then they stayed in the area. So, uh, again, but still St. Joseph had to pray, had to trust and not to worry that everything was going to be okay. And then, of course, uh, when you think of the birth of our Lord and uh, the great stress that uh, St. Joseph had to go through uh, when he entered Bethlehem and there was no room at the inn, uh, do you not think he was praying, trusting in God? I, it's, it's you and I, when we hear that story, we worry. But I believe that St. Joseph had that great confidence that he didn't worry. And so he's asking us not to worry also, uh, because we do have those difficult moments uh, not so much similar to what happened in Bethlehem, but still um, any woman that's had a baby uh, in, our, <laughs> in our group here uh, know the difficulties of that uh, moment of, as, as uh, the birth pains increase and all this. Um, I, I was there for <laughs> three of them, but not really there. You know, I just <laughs> was kind of like, um, you know, here I'm doing these confessions here. You know, I was, I was there, but, you know, just can you call me when it's done? You know, I, because again, I grew up in a generation where, uh, you know, the husbands kind of waited outside in the waiting room and, 
they had cigars and candies ready, but um, now today it's the husbands go inside and everything like that. So, um, you know, again, <laughs> but good St. Joseph, again, he prayed, he trusted, he didn't worry. And then of course, the um, presentation of our Lord in the temple, uh, you think about it in the eyes of St. Joseph. Uh, yes, the words of the prophet Simeon are addressed to Mary, but he heard those words and he had to ponder those words too because it was affecting his wife. And again, he loved her so much. And, you know, what that taught me, again, trying to just meditate on St. Joseph, is to be more loving to my wife, because my wife hears a lot of bad news. I think wives, they, uh, they pour their heart out to even their adult children. And so when you hear of all these things happening with children and, um, you know, you just, you can just come in, you say, honey, are you okay? Oh, this is happening in the children's life, the grandchildren's life. And, um, you know, it's bad news. It's, it's difficult, not traumatic news, but challenging news. And so St. Joseph had to console Mary during that time of receiving that challenging news. And so again, this idea of the josery and meditating on these mysteries is really, when Dr. Scott Hahn shared it, I thought, wow, there's some stuff here for all of us to learn. And, you know, the fifth mystery, of course, the finding of Jesus in the temple um, and St. Joseph's role in that. Um, naturally, I, I wonder if St. Joseph took a little bit of the blame on this because he is the father. And so you always think the pecking order. And so, you know, the stories talk that, you know, Joseph assumed that the child was with his mother and the mother assumed that the child was with her father, um, his father, sorry. And, um, you know, they come to camp for the first night and say, um, where's the boy? Um, I thought he was with you. No, I thought he was with you. <laughs> and that would have been a very difficult three days for good St. Joseph. You know, he was praying <laughs> and, you know, of course, trusting. I'm sure he was worrying a little bit, but um, still, because again, Our Lady said to uh, our blessed Lord, did you not know that you're your father and me were very anxious and worried, um, you know, about that. So, but still, I think it's this whole sense of, we all know what it's like to sometimes have a loss and to have a panic attack or to, um, I know, I've, I think I've lost my children temporarily for a minute here, a minute there, and it's, it's frightening sometimes, it can be. Uh, but still, I think St. Joseph had to just trust, because uh, again, uh, this, mission that he was give, given to take care of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the child Jesus. So again, the Josery, I thank Dr. Scott Hahn for introducing this. And he said it's a personal meditation. It's not, um, you know, approved necessarily, or there's no, the bishop hasn't, you know, uh, endorsed it yet. But I thought it was a great idea because it really has helped me uh, to, you know, get me to think about St. Joseph more. And I think this is what Hopefully the goal of this, uh, I want to see the end of this year is to kind of give us um, some practical um, guides to say, I'm going to try to do this uh, after the year of St. Joseph is over. We just don't want it to be what I call a one and done thing. We want to have some ideas that we could do, um, that we could use. And so, um, again, these are all things. So hopefully, again, uh, I know I've put a lot out there uh, today, but I think it was important to kind of just give us all uh, a little bit of food for thought. And again, I just feel like I'm a blessed man because, um, you know, I've kind of just made that decision that I want St. Joseph in my life every day. Uh, and I've had him in my life um, every day since I was 23 years old. And so um, I like to say he was there as a child, but I think I made that um, adult decision to say, I want St. Joseph in my life every day. And I've received many blessings over these last, you know, 30, close to 40 years of um, just be, having, being a devotee to St. Joseph. And I would strongly recommend him to everyone. So uh, again, we all have our favorite saints. And I have to say that good St. Joseph is my favorite. So um, I'm kind of partial to him. So again, I appreciate that I got a second a chance to share a little bit more today uh, here with our Perusia family. So uh, again, we'll go from there. That was absolutely amazing, Alan. And I can't thank you enough for being so willing to share those thoughts with us. Uh, you're right, there's a lot there. And I think many of us are gonna have to go back to the recording and, and listen all over again. 
and write them down. But this, these are all wonderful things that we can bring into our spiritual life. Uh, so thank you once again. Well, you're welcome. And, um, you know, I think what I say to people is that, you know, the books uh, that Father Calloway has written, of course, uh, the meditation book that you've been sharing, uh, these are books that I would recommend that people read throughout the year. I mean, a lot of times they just kind of will go on the shelf but to, to, to kind of ponder about St. Joseph, uh, especially on his feast day, like to, um, you know, kind of take those moments where I know for a lot of us, it's March the 19th. For some, it's May the 1st, which again is another feast day for St. Joseph. But uh, again, as we pray the joyful mysteries, the rosary gives us an opportunity to um, call on good St. Joseph to come and intercede in our lives. So um, again, let us hopefully not... Um, lose the opportunity or miss the opportunity. And uh, Mother Angelica would say, I think, what was that one? She'd say, everyone, we're all called to be saints. Don't miss the opportunity. So uh, don't miss the opportunity to bring good St. Joseph into your life each day. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you very much. And I just wanted to, um, you know, give the scripture verses for the um, paternal blessing uh, that you mentioned, also known as the Aaronic blessing. That is, of course, Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. That's Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. And this is a blessing that husbands can give to their wives and to their children. And of course, this is because it is a paternal blessing, a fatherly bl blessing. It's one also open to all priests. Now, in the absence of a father, so if the father is not there or the father has given up his you know, duties of faith, um, the mother may do this for her children. So just to let you know um, that one as well. So the ironic blessing. And uh, yeah, in, in my house, uh, I actually do three little crosses on the, on the children's foreheads. So, and at the end of each line, they say, Amen, when I do the cross. So yeah, you can bring all sorts of uh, lovely little devotions into that. And I, I really do thank you for mentioning that one because it is a, a wonderful privilege uh, for fathers to bless their wives and their children. And I think what I try to stress to men especially is that, um, you're in this um, for all eternity, okay? So mm -hmm. that, um, mm -hmm. you know, even though my children are 30 something, all of them, um, I'm still their father. And I always think when I get to be 85 and they're 65, I'm still their father. I'm still their father. I can still bless them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so again, it's not something that you relinquish at 18, mm -hmm. you know, when they're 18 or 19. No, no, you're a father, you're a mother. Uh, for a long time. <laughs> Sometimes we like to say for eternity, uh, but still, and again, so I have a duty to continue to pray for my children, even though they don't live under my roof, uh, but every night still impart a blessing upon them. And um, again, God, mm. I'm sure um, <laughs> loves it. And I think as children, I always say, um, you know, you can't stop me from praying from you, <laughs> for you, <laughs> you know, um, you may not call me or we may not want to talk, but you can never refuse my prayer. And so uh, keep praying for your children, even if you don't have a relationship with them. Uh, but again, you still have that ability to pray for them. So uh, it's praise be Wonderful. God. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah, praise be. And of course, speaking of prayer, it's now our great honor to pray with you once more, Alan. So I'm going to hand over to you to start the rosary. And what I think we'll do is we'll pray the opening prayers. And then just before we pray the mysteries, uh, I will pray a Remembrance Day prayer, and then we'll continue on with the mysteries of the rosary. So handing over to you, please, Alan. All right. I have to get my notes here. You know, yes. <laughs> I, I think, well, I think what, what we've all said and um, all the, um, the guest speakers are all kind of saying we all pray our rosary in our homes and we, we're very comfortable. But then all of a sudden when they put a camera on you and they say, can you read the rosary? You go, um, I don't know what the opening, <laughs> you know, <Yes. laughs> you know stuff like that. so we, we have that now, um, you know, I love to pray the world mission rosary and I think I've got to find mm. it. It's over here. It's, um, and again, I just say the world mission rosary and that I'd like to, you know, dedicate each decade to a different continent. And again, mm -hmm. this is what, uh, Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen taught me, you know, we pray one decade for, um, those in Africa. And of course that's the green color. Uh, blue, the blue beads represent Oceania and a, a country called Australia. 
and um, mm -hmm. let's see, the white is for Europe, where the Holy Father is, because he wears white. Uh, red is for the Americas, and um, you know, and then of course, uh, yellow is for Asia um, and uh, the Middle East and stuff. So, um, so again, it's a great opportunity. I love um, Fulton Sheen would say, when we pray the World Mission Rosary, we give the world a big hug. And so, uh, you know, many people all over the world, especially, are praying. Uh, during Remembrance Day for so many people too. So uh, we'll do that. So uh, I'll begin with the opening prayers in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again. And again, from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he'll come to judge the living and the dead. I believe, I believe in, the Holy, in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. In our Father and three Hail Marys for an increase of faith, hope and love in our families. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy own Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most need of thy mercy. Uh, today we'll and be praying the, the, we, the Luminous be, Mysteries. Go we ahead. Will, just before we do the Luminous Mysteries, though, as it is very close to 11 o'clock on the 11th of November here in Australia, um, we will remember those who have given so much for us, and we remember the words of Jesus in particular, that no greater love has a man that he lays down his life for his friends. And so uh, referring now to the uh, prayer on the Catholic Archdiocese of Sydney website. On the 11th hour of the 11th day in the 11th month of the year 1918, an armistice was signed ending the war to end all wars, World War I. November 11 has therefore been set aside as Armistice Day, a day to pray for those who have died serving their country. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask God, that God may give us peace. For the service men and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. May God give peace. God give peace for those who love them in death as in life offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. May God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. May God give peace. God give peace for civilian women, children, and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence, the anger and hatreds of humanity. May God give peace for peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free. May God give peace, God give peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military, and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace, may God give peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future. 
for you are the source of life and hope now and forever. Amen. And then I invite all those listening to this recording afterwards to pause for one minute of silence. Alan, back to you now to lead us in the Luminous Mysteries. Okay. The first Luminous Mystery is the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan. And uh, after Jesus was baptized, he came directly out of the water. Suddenly the sky opened and he saw the Spirit of God descend like a dove and hover over him. With that, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son. My favor rests on him. And so we'll pray this mystery for those who live in the con uh, continent of Africa. And uh, there's a short meditation that um, uh, Fulton Sheen would give. And um, he, um, of course, uh, gave meditations in the World Mission Rosary on the, you know, 15 decades of the rosary, but they've now added some meditations here. And I'll share this with you. Um, they ask you to think about it uh, being in a hospital in Hong Kong. A sister spoke to a young cancer patient about God, our loving father, and about heaven, our eternal home. Baptized, the child made the journey to God, clothed in Christ, because a sister had shared with him the fruits of her own baptism. And so we pray, especially for those nuns and religious who are working diligently to bring the faith uh, all over the world. And so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The second luminous mystery is the wedding feast at Cana. Uh, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. At a certain point, the wine ran out, and Jesus' mother told him, they have no more wine. His mother instructed those waiting on table, do whatever he tells you. And we'll pray this mystery for the uh, people of uh, 
the uh, Oceania and, uh, and of course, uh, Australia. And uh, we will share this meditation uh, about Blessed uh, or Saint Mother Teresa and that she once brought rice to a hungry family only to, find, only to find that the next day the food was gone. A neighboring family also had no food, receiving from the first family not only the subsistence, but also the Christian love. And so let us pray for that charity uh, that we all need to do. And of course, the example of these holy saints, such as Saint Mother Teresa. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The third luminous mystery is the proclamation of the kingdom of God. And Jesus appeared in Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The reign of God is at hand. Reform your lives and believe in the gospel. And the meditation I'll share here also is that uh, in East Africa, a Catholic family hearing of a village farmer uh, from their own where the people had never heard of Christ, moved there. Day by day, they would tell and show the people what it means to be a follower of Christ. And so, um, you know, I think it's just this idea that we can evangelize our own neighbors, even no matter what profession we're in. And so let us pray this mystery for those in Europe and especially for our Holy Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most need of thy mercy. The fourth luminous mystery is the transfiguration of our Lord. That Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. He was transfigured before their eyes. His face became as dazzling as the sun, his clothes as radiant as light. As light. And here we will share this meditation to catch even a glimpse of the glory that awaits us in Christ is a gift beyond compare for millions of people whose lives are a daily struggle, such as a glimpse was caught in Liberia, West Africa, when people by the hundreds fled from their homes in the midst of civil war. Their pastor said they left all of their belongings behind, but they brought with them one valuable possession, their faith. And so let us pray for the people of the Americas, North America and South America. And let's pray for people who have had to flee their homes and, of course, uh, have nothing but their faith. And so we pray for God to uh, bless them and keep them. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most need of thy mercy. The fifth luminous mystery is the institution of the Holy Eucharist. Taking bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body to be given for you. Do this as a remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after eating, saying, as he did so, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. Let us uh, think of these words. Uh, on as uh, many people celebrate uh, World Mission Sunday, uh, which is celebrated each year on the next to last Sunday in October. It, in the context of the Mass, it reminds us that we who eat Christ's body and drink his blood are sent to continue his mission to the world. We're all called to evangelize. And so as we pray this decade, let us pray for the people of Asia. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most need in thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. That, that we, we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life. Grant, we beseech thee, that by meditating on these mysteries of the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. And may, and the, may souls the souls of the faithful, of the faithful departed, departed through the mercy of God, God rest, in peace. rest in peace. Amen. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Mary, Queen of all saints, pray, pray for, for us. us. In the name of the Father, Father and the Son, and the, Son, and the Holy, Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alan, it's an honor to pray with you. Thank you so much for leading us today. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, again, happy Remembrance Day. And of course, uh, encourage everyone to, um, you know, do your part, do your part. And uh, let us not let the story ever be forgotten, uh, this story of great sacrifice. And so let us truly remember them. Amen. And of course, it is now time for our devotional reading for the day, once more from the glories of St. Joseph, with our thanks to the monks in Flavigny in France who have given us permission to do so. 23rd day, obedience of Jesus to St. Joseph. The very example of Jesus Christ, who on earth wished to give proof of such great respect and obedience towards St. Joseph, should be sufficient to move us all to become fervently devoted to this great saint. Jesus, from the very instant his heavenly father assigned Joseph to take his place on earth, always regarded him as his father and therefore showed him respect and obedience for 30 years, and he was subject to them. Which means that during all this time, the sole occupation of the Redeemer was to obey Mary and Joseph. During all this time, it was for Joseph to give orders as he was established head of this little family. And it was for Jesus to obey as a subordinate to the extent that he never undertook any action, not even a small step, nor ever ate his food, nor went to sleep except by the orders of St. Joseph. This humble obedience of Jesus shows that the dignity of Joseph is superior to that of all the saints, except that of the Divine Mother. Thus, it is with reason that a learned writer said, quote, he is worthy of being honored by men whom the King of Kings wished to elevate to such heights." End quote. Also, Jesus Christ himself recommended to St. Margaret of Cortona, quote, to have a special devotion to St. Joseph as the one who nourished him during his life, end quote. 
Joseph not only had the name of father of Jesus, but he also had the reality of it as much as any man could, said St. John Damascene. It is not the begetting alone which constitutes paternity, but also the authority and cares of government. Is there any function of the best of fathers which was not gloriously executed by this faithful and prudent servant whom the Lord chose to govern his family? Was it not Joseph who received the child Jesus and placed him on the manger straw? Was it not Joseph who reddened the circumcision knife with the most precious blood when he circumcised Jesus? We know in fact that it was the father who was chosen to perform this sacrament on his children. Was it not Joseph who saved him from the furies of Herod, his persecutor? Was it not he who supplied him with food, clothing and lodging during 30 years from the labor of his hands and the sweat of his brow? How many times did the arms of St. Joseph serve as a cradle for the child Jesus? What tender kisses he lavished upon him. How often did he feel him with his hands, dress him, teach him to speak and to work. How many times when this divine child had grown up, did Joseph rest on his heart? If St. Joseph was such a tender father to Jesus, what was Jesus to Joseph? No doubt that he was for him the best of sons, that he was submissive, obedient, and respectful in all things, as he was towards his father. Saint Joseph addressing the divine child Jesus by Saint Alphonsus Liguri. Since thou the name of father hast bestowed on me, my Jesus, let me call thee son. My son, I love, I love thee, yes, my God, forever will I love thee, dearest one. Thou art my God, I humbly thee adore, but as my son, ah, bid me kiss thy face, and make my heart remain for evermore, closed bound with sweetest chains in thy embrace. Since thou hast deigned to choose me here below, the nurse and guardian of thy life to be, my sweetest love, my God, ah, let me know, what willest thou, what dost thou ask of me? All, all I am, to thee I now resign, my love I consecrate to thee alone, and know my heart is mine no more, tis thine, my very life I do not call my own. Since thou art pleased to share my humble home, and be on earth companion of my love, well may I hope, dear Jesus, to become thy loved companion in thy home above. 100, not one less. St. Joseph's orphanage on Great Slave Lake in Canada was threatened by an imminent famine in March of 1917. 100 orphans, 10 nuns, and as many fathers and brothers felt the gnawing pangs of hunger. They dared not think of caribou for the hunters up to five kilometers away said that the woods favored by these reindeer for their wintering were deserted. The brothers caught only four trout in eight days with their 70 fishing poles stretched out together over a long distance in the deep water under the ice. One night, Father Duport, a superior of the mission, utterly consumed with worry went to the dining hall where he found the children seated at the table around small roasted pieces of the last fish. Assuming a dissatisfied air, he said, My children, if we are destitute, it is not the fault of our brothers nor of the sisters, for they have tried everything and have sacrificed all for you. It's your fault. Several children, believing they were being reproached for having eaten too much, began to sob. That is not the reason, continued the Father Superior. If I am angry, very angry, it is because you are not praying to St. Joseph with enough fervor. That is what I wanted to tell you. Upon this explanation, all the little ones stood up and promised to pray with all their might. 
the superior asked to determine the number of caribou necessary to save the mission responded that they needed 100, not less, not one less. Well, my children, on your knees. A new novena began to call upon St. Joseph to provide the 100 necessary caribou. Father Dupour sent for the two hired hunters of the mission. Prepare your dogs and immediately and leave. The hunters shrugged their shoulders. But you know as well as we do, Father, that there are no more. It's impossible. Leave, replied the father. Go and kill 100 caribou, not one less. St. Joseph owes them to us because we need them and we asked him for them. He will send them to us. Feeling quite sure they were going to fail, but paid for it anyway, the two men left. They had not walked two days, a short distance for that country, when a countless army of reindeer stood before them, coming from the east, against all known habits in Indian memory of these nomadic animals. Dumbfounded to see so suddenly and in this place, more caribou than they had ever seen together at one time, the hunters gathered their senses, took position and shot at the herd which ran away at top speed. A reindeer fell, sometimes two, with each shot of their powerful rifles. When the herd broke up, the Indians counted the dead. There were 103. It was at the precise moment that the sisters and the orphans united at the chapel for the novena implored St. Joseph in a heart-rendering prayer to quickly supply the 100 caribou, not one less. Prayer to St. Joseph for all spiritual blessings. O St. Joseph, whose protection is so great, so strong, so prompt before the throne of God, I place in thee all my interests and desires. O St. Joseph, do assist me by thy powerful intercession and obtain for me from thy divine Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, all spiritual blessings, so that, having engaged here below thy heavenly power, I may offer my thanksgiving and homage to the most loving of fathers. O St. Joseph, I never weary contemplating thee and Jesus asleep in thy arms. I dare not approach while he reposes near thy heart. Press him in my name and kiss his fine head for me and ask him to return the kiss when I draw my dying breath. Saint Joseph, patron of departing souls, pray for me, amen. And thank you once again for giving me the great privilege of reading this to you. And uh, now it's, um, it's back to, um, to Alan Smith, who is going to lead us in our consecration prayer for today, the Litany of Saint Joseph. Great. Um, just was so happy to hear that story from Canada. Uh, of course, my home and native land. And, um, you know, the Lord produced the miracle of fish. And of course, uh, many fish came in the boat. But to have 100 caribou, that's a lot of meat. Okay, so uh, we eat well in Canada. And when we ask St. Joseph, um, he delivers. And so, and of course, St. Joseph is the patron of Canada. So uh, mm. he is our patron for our country. So, um, you know, he... I did not did, know that. Yes. So yeah. good St. Joseph is our patron. So uh, mm. very good. All right. We will share the, um, the litany of St. Joseph. And so I'll lead you uh, in this. And so um, uh, many people have uh, them in their different books. But uh, again, please join me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Litany of St. Joseph. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Renowned offspring of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, 
Pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God. Pray for us. Chase Guardian of the Virgin. Pray for us. Foster Father of the Son of God. Pray for us. Diligent Protector of Christ. Pray for us. Head of the Holy Family. Pray for us. Joseph Most Just. Pray for us. Joseph Most Chaste. Pray for us. Joseph Most Prudent. Pray for us. Joseph Most Strong. Pray for us. Joseph Most Obedient. Pray for us. Joseph Most Faithful. Pray for us. Mirror of Patience. Pray for us. Lover of Poverty. Pray for us. Model of Artisans. Pray for us. Glory of Home Life. Pray for us. Guardian of Virgins. Pray for us. Pillar of Families. Pray for us. Solace of the Wretched. Pray for us. Hope of the Sick. Pray for us. Patron of the Dying. Pray for us. Terror of Demons. Pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church. Pray for us. Exemplar of all fathers. Pray for us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. He made him the Lord of his house. And prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in thy unspeakable providence did is vouchsafe, vouchsafe to choose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of thine own most holy mother and to be a father to you, O son of God. Grant we beseech thee that we may deserve to have him for our intercessor in heaven, whom we reverence as our defender on earth, who liveth and reigneth world without end. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alan Smith, thank you so much for giving us so much of your time and your wisdom today. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. And I'll leave you with that motto that is behind me, pray, trust, don't worry. And I'm sure that's good St. Joseph's motto too. Amen. Uh, and I am hopeful that you might be able to hang around for just a little longer because I'm certain that our live participants would love to say hello and ask some questions. Can you hang around? Yeah. I can hang around. Excellent. All right. And thank you to all joining us for this uh, consecration uh, to Jesus through Joseph. You honor us by joining us and by listening and watching these recordings. So thank you. But that is enough from us for today. So farewell. And may God bless you all richly through the intercession of St. Joseph. Amen. <laughs>